Hello, every folks, and good morning. Welcome to another edition of Know Your Units, this time for a new game, because we're going to be talking about Unicorn Overlord. Uh, so for those that uh, have maybe not been on the channel before, long story short, I've got a long-running series here, uh, just kind of going over how to use... Uh, well, just units uh, primarily from the Tactics Ogre and Ogre Battle games um, that have constantly been updating for years. But let's go ahead and get into uh, into the house, Carl, here today. So, yes, of course, but Carl the Axe kills people! So, uh, let's go ahead and talk about that. Um, so... House, basically, the House Carl is a can opener and a closer at the same time. Uh, they're a unit uh, that's uh, great at the beginning, great at the end, and you forget about them entirely in the middle, but uh, their, uh, their loadout, at least this far into the demo, is honestly something incredibly fun. And actually, a little bit of a side note, if you ever want to have a really, really good result out of a House Carl, um, get the uh, the Rose Knight Axe. Uh, you can actually just steal this uh, from Fran, even though she's abducted. So... <laughs> Uh, you can just basically go and take her axe for additional initiative. Uh, but basically the way that I have this guy uh, set up here is that uh, he's entirely here to try and open up defenses at the very start. Typically I'll uh, go and put them in the back row because uh, there isn't, isn't really a whole lot of reason for them to be tanking much. They're not really the tankiest uh, class in the world. But uh, they have two uh, main things that they, they bring to bear. So Smash is going to uh, give negative 20% uh, to physical defense. Uh, this will stack on top of something like a uh, like a strengthening trot there, um, potentially allowing for a unit to get completely cleaved in half, and especially the earlier that you can get this out, the better, kind of like the, uh, uh, kind of like the fighters uh, with their defensive moves. You want to try to get this uh, defense lowering as much as possible. Um, um, now, the way that I typically like to set it up is that uh, the Smash is uh, usually going for highest health and highest percentage health. Usually those are the ones that you want to have taken out. However, you can also do stuff like give them the Counter Belt and the Lapis Pendant uh, to allow them to keep their Parting Blow to finish somebody off at the end of the fight. And additionally, if they are attacked at any point, they can also attempt to, uh, to counter attack, uh, going for a lowest health priority as well. Now, they do have a few things that uh, they can potentially stack, but a few things that also don't. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the things that I was hoping would work uh, was to give them a bunch of uh, AP boosting items and potentially stack multiple parting blows at the same time. Unfortunately, you can't have them go completely ham on an entire party as they're leaving, um, but uh, it would be kind of cool if they could, huh? Uh, so anyways, yeah, great uh, great opener, great closer, um, and as far as their equipment goes, uh, they're I mean, there aren't really too many axe units, uh, so when you get some of the fancier axes, it gives you something more to work with. Uh, usually, you probably want to start them off with something like uh, Chloe's Pendant, as well as the Recruit's Hand Axe, uh, to uh, get them built up a little bit. And if at all possible, uh, I know personally, I've... I found this unit as one of the best uh, back row supports uh, of the classes available in the demo, um, not only because of the, uh, the equipment loadout of stuff that, well, frankly, again, you don't have too many axe users, so any nice axes can go straight to them, but their Valor skill over here, uh, Vitalize, allows for basically resting without resting. It is a two-point cost, so it's not the cheapest thing in the world, but if you are potentially going for uh, for those big, uh, big snipes, uh, you can create a situation where you effectively are able to just kind of keep the momentum rolling over and over and over and over and over, um, potentially uh, just steamrolling through an entire map, just because of uh, this vitalized skill. Uh, so see the uh, the speedrun guide that should be uh, coming out a little bit before this uh, for a little bit more on that. Uh, but this allows for speedrunning through the uh, uh, through uh, Auch's boss fight in the very beginning of the game without anything extra actually needed. Uh, that skill alone is enough to carry that. Um, in a lot of harder fights, it's enough to completely turn a fight around by itself. Easily one of the strongest uh, Valor abilities in my book. Um, just, again, the ability to take a couple of extra attacks or to maneuver a little bit farther. Um, just the fact that it's specifically two points of stamina, not just one, uh, means that it uh, can, in a pinch, uh, get you around, for example, item restrictions. Uh, it can get you uh, just uh, kind of over the finish line, as it were. And really, that's kind of the house Carl in a nutshell. They're the class that gets you, uh, that gets you started and gets you over the finish line. Everything else is up to you. But you just stick them in the back row, and they will get the job done. Um, ideally, personally, I would say uh, probably go for uh, uh, for a house girl that's got the best initiative possible. 
Uh, the uh, the debuff will be 20% regardless of what you're hitting, and they're probably going to be hitting pretty good regardless. Uh, Parting Blow is mostly a finishing move, so it doesn't have to be the craziest damage in the world. Um, and again, something like a Counterbelt obviously can be something else if you'd prefer. Uh, if, I mean, in this case, he is going for a counter setup. Um, but if you wanted to, for example, instead go for something like uh, Gauntlets for a bit more uh, defense there, combine that with something like a uh, Silk Scarf, you might have a guy that's uh, guarding and evading quite a decent bit. Uh, that's something that's going to have some serious survivability to it. Um, those 20% don't seem like much, but man, any of y'all uh, Tactics Ogre fans that are watching this, you remember what that 20 to 30% got you in Tactics Ogre Reborn? And now you're stacking two of them suckers on there at the same time? Yeah, this is an endgame Tactics Ogre build that this guy's running all of a sudden. Um, so, either way, uh, great stuff there. Again, if you can get their initiative higher, that would be ideal. But if not, you have other things there as well. Um, I personally prefer to take Crush off of there. Uh, this Crushing Axe is something that actually... I mean, there's a few Crushing Axes that you can get. I personally uh, would prefer moving that to something... Um, uh, to uh, uh, to uh, to something like the uh, uh, the flyers, uh, just because while their their big wide AOE hit is useful, uh, their ability to come in with high initiative and stun is going to potentially be more useful. Um, but in this case, the smash is potentially a far bigger opener, uh, especially when you're going for those big punch throughs. Um, early game combining with Elaine and combining with Joseph, uh, Aubin here can open up for them, uh, and really, really, really get some damage through. So if you can create those situations where you're getting first strike, um, and you're uh, getting him with a higher initiative, or any other house card with high initiative, you can steamroll. Uh, so they're a great opener in that regard. Um, and yeah, that's kind of about it. They're not the most complex class in the world, but they do have a really solid, uh, uh, solid uh, toolkit at their disposal. Um, not anything too complicated with their equipment, and um, yeah, that's kind of about that. So, y'all have yourselves a good one, take care, uh, thank you for stopping by, and I will see you in the next one.